wrecking stories. I think I'm live right now, but not 100% sure because I'm like one of those old guys that really doesn't know what they're doing with this stuff. So anyway, I'm actually at a property that I've, it seems like I've been here a few times in the past couple weeks doing these live videos. And for this one right here, uh, it's almost a finished product, so I just kind of wanted to take a walk inside. This is a house I bought on Eagle Street. Last week when uh, when I did this wrecking thing, I took you to the first property that I bought. And for this one right here, this is actually the last property that I bought a few months ago. Kind of like, uh, I don't know, one of these projects that I did because I was kind of bored and didn't really know what to do. And I got it from a guy named Tyler Frank that was a wholesaler. People are always asking me, how do you find your deals? How do you find your deals? There's a lot of different ways to do it. So let me uh, get on this house before we start getting a lot of traffic. And sorry, my phone's ringing. It's probably going to, everybody wants to get paid. It's Friday. So let's go on in the house, take a look. I was in here a few days ago. I'm going to flip this camera around so you can get a shot at the floor and all that fun stuff. So I was in here a few days ago, if you saw another video, and the, uh, the actual flooring wasn't down. And you might have actually recalled I had, uh, I was showing how my contractor was making a template for the stringers on the steps to cover up the old wood. Uh, to hopefully eliminate any potential uh, lead stuff. And this is the finished product right here, and you can't even tell. Last time, I think I was doing this video, I hit Carlos on here, and we put another railing up on both sides. So here's the look from in the uh, living room area looking up at it. And then this flooring product is called Allure and you buy it at Home Depot. And I actually got a scrap piece because I just want to show you how the stuff works. It's actually like a rubber material. Then we transition into the kitchen area. A lot of times what I do is I actually use a lure all the way through the house. And they have a bunch of different uh, finish types. But this is actually what it looks like. And as you see, it's like a rubber material that you know, has a lot of bend to it. And uh, what it does is it overlaps. This is like a little glue strip. So the pieces overlap. You can actually cut it with a razor knife. So there's no sawdust. You don't even need power. You can literally come in here with a house with no power and finish off this floor. It's a floating floor, meaning it just lays on top of the existing floor. So one of the things that you want to be smart about is to make sure that the floor that you're putting it on top of is smooth. Because if there are any nails, nail heads sticking up or screws or anything like that sticking up, then it's going to wear through. Uh, a lot faster so you want to make sure it's a smooth floor and that stuff supposedly has like a 25 year warranty I don't know the exact cost because my guys just go to Home Depot and buy it and I pay for it at the pro desk and it's usually with a bunch of other materials but here's the box right there and that's what the product's called so let's see here so anyway usually a lot of times we get a teak finish but this is what we got the, uh, the carpet is called Bark and as I've mentioned like a thousand times, Joe Bossolina uh, installs that. I think the whole house, well, I'm not going to say the whole house, but these steps and the bedroom and this hallway and these two little bedrooms were uh, $733. And that included the carpet, padding, insulation, everything. And that would have also included the removal of the old carpet. And then here's the bathroom. I know you guys, I think you saw this from another video. It might not have been on Wrecking Stories, but I've had this house on a few different videos. So there were a couple of other items that I wanted to talk about that weren't necessarily related to this house. So let me go ahead and switch around and talk about what those things were. I actually made a checklist because I'm not that smart and I would have forgot half of them and I'm probably going to still miss half of them even though I wrote them down. So talk about the allure. Now some of the other things are people are always asking me, well Mark what do you do? I only worked a couple hours a day. How is he spending your time? So I go to a lot of lunches. Uh, today's Friday. I do a Friday lunch every Friday at 2601 Wilkins Avenue. I just left there uh, a few minutes ago. And this house is in that area. I think we had about 23, 24 people show up today. 
very nice mix of people. Uh, new people, people you know that are just starting, people that own many, many units, people that have been doing this for, you know, that just started or have been doing it for 15 or 20 years show up. So it's a nice mix. If you're new, it gives you a chance to, you know, bounce things off of people that have been doing it for a while, get some advice, and uh, there's no charge. I mean, you just, you know, pay for your lunch if you want to eat. I uh, went out to lunch yesterday with another uh, group of new investors. They were interested in buying some apartment buildings. They actually wanted to buy, uh, they are interested in buying an 18-unit apartment building that I own, and they found my contact information, I think on COSAR or something like that. And so uh, I'm not really interested in selling that building, but I was interested in meeting them for lunch just to find out, you know, what they're looking for, you know, how they're paying for it because those buildings are expensive. You're going to typically need 25% down. So if I sold that building for $1.2 million, there would be $300,000 out of pocket plus uh, closing costs, which would probably be in the thirty dollars to $50,000 range. Uh, so they would need three twenty-five to three fifty to settle on a building like that. It's fully leased, uh, so it's turnkey, but it's still a lot of money, especially if you're first starting out. So I was just interested in meeting with them and seeing what all they're doing, and uh, it was a great lunch. I think I made some made some new friends that I hopefully will know for years to come, and I'll get to see their progress, uh, you know, through their own story. Uh, we all have our own unique path that we follow, and it it's helpful when you can talk to other people that have gone ahead of you. So that you can learn from maybe some of their mistakes that they've made, and and also you can learn from some of the things that they've done that have brought them success. Uh, one of the things I'd like to warn you about. I've been at this game for a little while, so I kind of know. Uh, looks are deceiving. You meet a lot of people, and they got nice suits and nice cars, and claiming they've been doing this for years, and then you find out that their success is really mm, not as much as you might think and then you meet guys that uh that run around in you know cars that aren't very expensive and you know clothes that are very unassuming and you find out that they own 30 40 50 60 houses been doing it for 15 years they own half their stuff free and clear so really don't judge a book by its cover because uh it could cost you a lot of money uh so i always check for referrals and all that stuff uh, when you're, you know, talking with people, especially if they're, they want to charge you for stuff. Um, other things I wanted to talk about. So then I went to lunch with another guy named Mike Shock Tuesday, who's like another, he's another monster in this business. He's been doing this for years and he's very successful. And, uh, and for me, it's really like a privilege to be able to go out to lunch with guys like him, uh, because, you know, I'm doing well, I've learned a lot, but I still have a lot to learn. You know, this is, a huge learning process, even for somebody that's been doing it successfully for 15 years. Uh, it's still an honor to talk to other people that are doing as well or, or better and uh, that have like really good morals and all that stuff. So it's, it was really an honor to meet him uh, for lunch. What else have I done this week? It's two lunches that I haven't had much to do. So anyway, let me see. Will Mitchell just called me. I'm going to give him a shout out. So the, uh, let's see, I talked about the lunch stuff. Uh, so here's another thing. This is really something that's important. I was just talking to some newer investors today at lunch, and they were expressing a concern. It's a common concern, and it's a legitimate concern, but it's something that you need to manage. Uh, you know, they're afraid. Like, well, what's going to happen? What if this? And what if that? And, man, you can what if yourself right out of business. I mean, uh, you have to look at it like this. Like, what's the worst thing that can happen? Let's say you decide you're going to buy a Bel Air Edison house and you're out of pocket $10,000 and just everything goes upside down. You just, you decide, like, you just hate it. You just don't like it. It's not your business. What's the worst thing that's going to happen? You're going to sell it and you're going to lose $5,000, $10,000, maybe? That's a small price to pay because... That's what you could potentially lose, but what could you gain? Like, really, like, what could you gain? So, you can gain freedom. How do you, what do you mean freedom? It's cash flow. You got to buy for cash flow. Don't listen to the appreciation, people. Appreciation puts you out of business. Appreciation does not pay your bills for your personal life. It's not going to help you get through the vacancies and the repairs and all that stuff. You got to, you got to base your investments on cash flow. Not just cash flow, but that should be number one. Uh, so, when you buy for cash flow, 
then it's going to help to get you freedom to get out of your that job that just over broke or whatever. Uh, there's a lot of different things it could stand for. I think I got that from Jay Scott, actually, maybe. So anyway, so that's something that you should consider. The other thing is these rentals are actually, you know, they're going to be my retirement as well. And they could be yours too. You figure if you start buying when you're 30, by the time you're 60, you're going to own them free and clear. And if you buy them really smart and you're really aggressive, you can own them free and clear by the time you're 50, 55 years old. What would your life be like if you're 50, 55 years old and you own 15 houses free and clear? Probably pretty good. And you can actually do it a lot faster than that. I'm just kind of like going like, average case uh, I did it in five uh, five years where I left my IT job where I was making over $130,000 a year and uh, five years into this uh, I said adios and I left that job and haven't looked back haven't regretted one minute of it and I actually could have did it faster if I would have known what you know you know a lot more than I knew there were no meetups I, I, you hear me say this all the time there was no Facebook there was no Craigslist there was none of that stuff uh, I didn't even know about the raise the first couple of years so those are some of the issues uh, that you should consider. So the buy and hold, man, I mean, don't wait. Educate yourself and then get out there and do it. If you don't have any money, you can still do it. You don't have to. I didn't, this house I'm walking in now, I didn't have any money. That's, there's no money out of my pocket in this. Actually, I might have gone one or 2000 over budget. I haven't figured it out yet. But one or $2,000, it's not a big deal. And I'm getting a free and clear in five years. Uh, I'm not suggesting that you can start with no experience, not knowing anybody, and you can buy houses with zero out of your pocket and then free and clear in five years. Uh, this was actually kind of like a challenge for myself, kind of like a hobby. Like I thought, I wonder if I could do that and get 10 houses and then free and clear in five years with nothing out of my pocket. And uh, so this was the first one. I'm probably going to still buy a few more like that. Uh, I've just got a bunch of other things that I've been working on recently that have been occupying some of my time. So, uh, when this is rented out, I'll probably start looking for another one to try to do the same thing. And what are some of the other items I wanted to talk about? Let's see. I wrote some notes down. I don't even know what it means. It says get a tenant to buy the car. I don't even know what that means. So if I do remember, then I'll put it in the comments. Uh, the last thing that I want to mention in this one, I think next week I'm going to be out of town. I'm still going to do this video, but I'm actually going to be I'm going to Florida next week for a week to take a, a class in something really unrelated to what I'm doing right now. Uh, it's kind of like a personal growth type thing. So the last thing that I wanted to say, and I'm saying this is the old guy. I know many of you are a lot younger than me. So this is just something that is like, I just have to say it. Your health is your wealth and treat your body good, take care of yourself. Uh, all the money in the world isn't gonna help you if you're miserable and, and stuck in bed and you know taking 20 pills a day and all that crap when you're my age. So uh, if you really wanna enjoy your, you know, your later years and your life today and tomorrow, if you wanna enjoy both, uh, take care of yourself. The other thing about that is, like any damage that you do to your body now, like the age of 25, is going to be multiplied. So, you know, you do damage today, smoking, drugs, whatever. By the time you're 50, the, the damage is going to multiply. So wait till you're my age and then start. I'm just kidding. Don't do that. Wait till you're like 75 or something like that. Anyway, that's uh, my second boring episode. Sorry if I put you to sleep. Uh, but some of these things are like really important. Some of them are just kind of like FYI stuff, like the lower stuff. Anyway, hope you all have a great weekend. Take care.